Are you struggling with fatigue? If so, you're here because you're wondering, could your thyroid be a culprit? So there's a lot of different causes for fatigue, but thyroid is one of them. So first we are going to dive into what are the symptoms of a low thyroid, but then we're going to look at how our body acts to produce its thyroid hormones, what labs you should be considering so you can get the right help and answers you need. First, when we look at thyroid, really I want you to think about it as thyroid controls the speed at which the cells in our body function. So if there's too much, our cells function way too fast, gives us palpitations, right? Excessive sweating, weight loss, and things like that, not good. But also on the other side, if they're slow and sluggish, you're going to say, oh, those symptoms make a lot of sense because we've got fatigue, we've got brain fog. Now, each of you probably defines brain fog a little bit differently. Maybe it's problems finding words, zoning out, processing speed, and other things like that. Next, weight gain, or you just have this, this weight that is stubborn and it will not fall off. Next, depression, headaches, and hair loss. Okay, brittle nails and other things like that also commonly occur. So how many of these do you have? And you don't need all of those to be thyroid. Okay, you only need a few. So when we look at this, you got to say, well, okay, I've got the symptoms of my thyroid, but is it my thyroid or not? This is where understanding how thyroid is produced in the body is really valuable. So what happens is you have this gland in your brain known as the pituitary gland. It releases something called TSH. Okay. So TSH is, I'm going to put lab by it. So this is one of the most common labs you will always have performed if you wonder if you're dealing with thyroid issues. And as you're going to learn, this should not be the only lab. Now, I've definitely seen it be the only lab, but it shouldn't be. It's not a complete evaluation. So TSH, thyroid troponin, stimulating hormone, okay, tells the thyroid, I want you to produce thyroid hormones. Now, the two you've got are T4 and T3. Ultimately, it's the T3 free one. This is what goes to your tissues in your body to work. Now, when your body produces it, 90% becomes T4. The other 10% becomes T3. Once again, you have lab values for T4. You have lab values for T3. You have free values, but you also have total values of T4 and T3. Here is where it's really, really important. I've had a handful of patients with this very recently is their TSH looks good, their T4 is good, but yet their T3 is on the low end. So you may be thinking, well, I mean, if T3 is on the low end, shouldn't we just get the T3 up? Yes, but you can either go directly and medicate that, which I prefer to give the body a chance first. So we have to say, what, how does T4 become T3 anyways? Well, that happens within the liver primarily, and then also the gut. So if your liver health isn't as good as it should be, your gut health isn't as good as it should be, now what can happen is you get a mismatch. So you have more T4 compared to T3 percentage-wise, okay? Percentage-wise, do not look at total numbers in your labs because T4 will always be higher. So you have to look at it percentage-wise. So if, if that's the case though, percentage-wise T4 is higher than T3, this is a conversion issue. It's not a T4 issue because when you look at the medications given for hypothyroid, it's levothyroxine or synthroid's the most common. Now there's other things, armor thyroid, that's a combination of both, but let's go back to levothyroxine. If you give this here, but you have poor conversion, while you may be driving this up more, you don't overly fix the issue. So this has taken a well-rounded, holistic approach to thyroid. So I hope you found this useful as we looked at the connection between thyroid fatigue. We looked at the symptoms. We also looked at labs. So once again, TSH, T4, T3, total and free. And then the bonus is the majority of cases of low thyroid are autoimmune. Now, the labs for autoimmune 
are thyroperoxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies. Those should also be done if there's a case of that. And we'll talk about that more in future videos. Please let me know what questions or thoughts you have. And like always, please give me a like, comment, share, and follow me. And until next time, this is Dr. Z, Brain Guy.